Hello, this is Matt Singer. I'm the arts and culture editor at Willamette Week. And my guest today is Mikey Conroy. Uh, Mikey is a, uh, for the last 20 years, has been a manager at Rimsky's uh, Course of Coffee House in Southeast Portland, which is, uh, I think can easily be said as probably Portland's for 40 years has been Portland's most uh, idiosyncratic and unique uh, coffee house, certainly, and probably one of its most uh, unique businesses overall, uh, pretty much ever since it opened. Um, and Mikey, maybe you could just kind of give a quick primer on how you ended up working at Rimsky's. Well, um, I mentioned to my landlord at the time that uh, I had had a job for five years and I wanted to do something else. And he was good friends with the owner, Goodrin Cable or Goody Cable. And he just said, go in there and just ask. And I came in one night and they just, someone said, do you want to wash dishes? And um, that was 20 years ago. <laughs> and I've had my foot in the door ever since. So, and I wasn't always the manager, it just sort of happened but um they trust she trusts me enough to leave her business in my hands and so, uh, i so, kind of moon walked into the position got it yeah <laughs> uh, which is the, always the best way to uh to get into any gig i think mm -hmm. um so uh you know for people who don't know you know rimsky's has great desserts uh you know great coffee but really what the draw has always been uh, since it opened in 1980 is the atmosphere. Uh, it's it's in, housed inside of a, a converted craftsman home in the Buckman neighborhood. It looks like, I think I described it in a blog post recently as like a haunted Victorian brothel. Um, <laughs> there's, you know, there's live classical music. Uh, the bathrooms are nuts. Uh, the tables move randomly. Um, so, you know, it's a place and where people- want to. Right, exactly. So it's a place where people, you know, if you're going to go to Rimsky's, for the most part, you're going to want to sit inside and hang out there, which has not really been possible, obviously, for the last couple of months. So you've been doing takeout there, but how, can you kind of get, tell me about how business has been since, you know, March when uh, the pandemic really set in and everything shut down? Um, starting, well, with the lockdown, we basically just stopped all business. And um, we were able to because we had savings and we own the building. So uh, we just paid the utilities and the taxes, but you know, that doesn't last forever. And we started up, I guess, doing takeout in August and to take advantage of the warm weather. And um, it's been, I don't know, I guess, Takeout wise, it hasn't been really profitable. I mean, we, we've had some good nights, but I mean, we went from having $1,200 nights to $200 nights. So we can only afford to have one employee basically, and that's part-time. And um, I mean, a lot of us that work here, they're either, we're either getting unemployment or taking other jobs. And I'm, I'm volunteering a lot of my time just to make sure the place is still here and running, you know, for we, when we eventually reopen and provide that casually threatening atmosphere that everyone loves. <laughs> the GoFundMe campaign uh, was looking to raise $5,000 to cover uh, various operating costs. And I guess for people who don't understand the overhead of running a place like Rimsky's where, like you said, you know, Goody owns the, the building. So I think, you know, in most people's minds, if they, if they don't understand kind of what goes into running a, a restaurant, it's like, well, if you're not paying rent, then what do, what are you paying for? So wow. can, can, can you maybe tell, yeah, kind of what, go, what, when we say operating costs, what does that mean exactly? Well, there's taxes, there's fees, licensing fees, there's workman's comp, there is um, overhead, you know, groceries, utilities, like our property taxes were $6,000. And, you know, <laughs> I was like, what? So it's a crash course in running a business for me. And um, I'm just seeing all this stuff, you know, firsthand. And I'm like, oh, you know, just how do we do this when we're not bringing in money? 
and uh, and um, but yeah, it's just like no state taxes, federal taxes, you name it. Um, but uh, I thought we'd be able to cover it all with just our savings, but it's just been whittling away like so quickly. And then, you know, I still have to pay the one employee and it's like when you're paying him more than you're bringing in, I'm just panicking. Thankfully, I've been able to sell some pastries to other cafes because I'm also the baker. So <laughs> I have got my fingers in every, all the pies now, like, which amazes me. Yeah, I was, I was really intimidated at first, but um, like when she approached me to do the baking and she was acting like I should go on the best British Bake Off and I was like, I don't even know how to boil water. And well, that's a lie. <laughs> I can, but um, I've learned a lot, you know, trial and error. Right. And nobody complains. They love my stuff. I'm not going to lie. I, you know, I file, I follow the recipe. <laughs> that's great. Um, uh, and the other thing about Rimsky's is that, you know, it's, it's, it's a very old school place in terms of how it works. You know, it's cash only. Um, I, I don't think it's on, without looking, I'm imagining it's not on any, for that reason, it's not on any like third party delivery services or anything like that. Has there been a, a, a push to modernize a, a, at all in terms of and to kind of stay alive during this, this period? We're actually considering it because uh, I was trying to sign up for Grubhub, but um, our book, we have a bookkeeper too and um she always <laughs> she always sends me the wrong number so i got locked out of trying to do grubhub so i need to contact them directly but uh we're we're considering doing square um i'm looking at it at it all and and how to link it up with our uh bank account but it's all kind of new to us because we we have operated on cash and and uh, for 40 years, so, but I guess it's the wave of the future, right? We are, <laughs> we've always like prided ourselves of existing in the um, the 19th century, but. Yeah. I was gonna say it's the wave of, the, uh, the wave of uh, 20 years ago, about uh, <laughs> to be honest, yeah. <laughs> going, going to the cards. Um, uh, well, well, what would, you know, obviously you've spent, I would imagine like half of your life now working at Rimsky's. It's been, and you, you've already touched on all the things that it's kind of done for you. I mean, can you kind of quantify like what, or describe kind of what this place, what Rimsky's means to you and what it would mean to Portland to not have a place like Rimsky's anymore? Um, it would be, oh gosh. It would be such a loss because it's it's part of the fabric of the city that so many quirky, charming, little uh, mom and pop places and um, that are just you know unique. It's in it's in an old house. It's over a hundred and twenty years old, and and it just kind of like radiates that that charm of another era. And um, when you lose places like that and are replaced by chains, it just seems sterile. It's like anywhere USA. Um, people come to Rimsky's and, they, and it feels uniquely Portland. It feels like organic to this town. And, uh, and I have friends in other cities and when I go see them, it's just like you, you see the loss of the historic places and it just seems whitewashed or uh, mini mauled and people like gathering places they they want to go out and and hang out we learn you know we keep when I was growing up they kept saying you know everything's gonna go online and uh, Amazon will take over but people they really need that personal contact because you know you can't do everything on zoom <laughs> And it's just, uh, it would, it would just 
be like losing a, a jewel in, in Portland's crown if Rimsky's disappeared.